I'm going to talk about fitting a square peg in a round hole. Actually, more specifically, a rectangular peg in a round hole. Am I still at the right distance from the camera? Because I really have no means to check if I am 70 away from there. I hope so. We'll just go with it. I think that's about right. There's something clearly wrong with this picture, so this video probably shouldn't take much time for me to explain. This particular lens was designed for a film format that is far smaller than Micro Four Thirds, which is why we've got this vignetting around the sides here. And you can probably also see that there's a circle of good definition that hopefully my face is sharp, but the extremes probably fall off quite swiftly to mushiness. That particular lens was designed sometime in 1926. It's a Kino Plasmat. Kino Plasmat? I think it's a Kino Plasmat. Fastest lens of its day. F1.5, 16 millimeter lens. This particular lens was designed to cover standard 16 millimeter format, and it did it just barely. The image circle that's made from this lens is very, very small. There's a fairly large illumination area, but the circle of good definition is quite bitingly small, to be completely honest. A description of this lens I found in a magazine from 1938, but it was originally designed in 1926 by Dr. Paul Rudolph, who was working for Hugo Meyer. Before that, he was working for Carl Zeiss, and he designed the planars, he designed the tessars, which is kind of cool. So he is a bit of a dude. This particular lens I found on a camera. This camera. This is a Bolex. It was made sometime before 1952. The reason I say that is this one is a two perf rather than a single perf, which means there's perforations on both sides of the film. So this is designed to take a particular type of film that we don't really make all that commonly anymore. We make 16 millimeter with a single perf because that's gone on to create uh, super 16 formats and, and all that. Back to the square peg and a round hole. Standard 16 format is quite a bit smaller than Micro Four Thirds. I'm making this video on my antique GF1. It's not truly an antique. I bought it in 2010, so it's 11 years old. But I guess in digital form, yeah, it is kind of an antique. It's just sort of a couple of notches newer than tapping something into a stone tablet. So I switched the lens. Yeah, I switched the lens. This is a 21 millimeter f3.8, made by Vivitar probably in the late 60s or the early 70s. I'm not quite sure how old this one is. It was designed to cover 35 millimeter film. 35 millimeter film is far larger than 16 millimeter motion picture film, and it's still larger than micro four thirds. So this lens is casting an image circle that has good definition that covers the entire micro four thirds sensor. I can use this lens on a full frame digital camera. I can use this lens on an APS-C sized camera. I can use this lens on my Micro Four Thirds camera. It's a useful lens that will cover a variety of different sensor sizes. I could even throw this on a film camera if I wanted to because that's what it was designed for. So when we're selecting lenses for a particular format, we want to be aware of where we may be going in the future. We want to make sure that we can port our lenses with us because camera bodies may come and go, but our lenses, if we invest properly in them, we'll keep them forever. Thanks for watching.